He is known for being a three-time winner in dog fighting, a dog that gave rise to several lines of the APBT breed, and this is the true story of how the Dibwa, from Mr. Earl Tudor, was born. After much investigation into the APBT, on a trip to the U.S. in the 1990s, I met by chance the breeder of the best APBT of all time, the legendary Dibwa dog. It was a surprise, because these articles cannot be read in magazines, nor books. That, can only be heard, from the mouth, of great dogmen, influential people, and known in their time, creators, with an honest opinion, in the midst of the APBT, and who were present, in some way, in the excerpts, which will be narrated, next. APBT fans, who already know the story, that Howard HNZL, is the creator of the dog Dibois, by Earl Tudor, which was even reported in APBT magazines at the time. You will appreciate, the same statement. In 1956, the Lord, Howard Hainzel, became known, for his honesty, as a creator. And for the genetic quality of its APBT. He got his start in dog breeding around 1930. And in the late 1950s. The Lord, Al Braun, sent a very good dog, for you, Howard HNZL. HNZL wanted to mate this dog with the female Bambi. And in the form of thanks, from the dog, that A.L. Brown, sent. He was going to send, two puppies, to you, A.L. Brown. Another passion of Mr. HNZL was raising horses. He had some problems, related to horses, and had to move out of town. In January 1951. Bambi was coming into heat. You, W.D. Smith, were a man, who worked for you, HNZL. He took care of the dogs at the ranch. Hainzel left Smith in charge of mating Bambi while he was away. He would have to mate, the female Bambi, on the dog, which A.L. Brown, had sent. Smith, tried to mate Bambi, with the dog, that A.L. Brown, sent. But this dog, he was very rude, and Bambi, didn't like him, and tried to fight him, in the backyard, of HNZL. There was another dog, winner of two fights, named Bounce. Smith knew that this dog was very dear, and that HNZL also liked him. Mr. HNZL was not 100% confident to use Bounce. And Smith decided to test whether Bambi would like Bounce. Bambi did not resist the bravura of Bounce. And when HNZL returned from the trip, Smith informed Mr. HNZL that he had mated Bambi with the dog Bounce. Mr. HNZL was very upset. And when Bambi had the puppies, he got rid of them all. The puppies were born on March 21, 1951. Exactly on the same day it started, spring. Mr. HNZL gave the two puppies to A.L. Brown as a gift. A.L. Brown took a male and a female. Even though he knew that the mating could not be done, and that the puppies were not his dog's puppies. The female was called B.O.O., and later, they changed the name to L.I.L. The male was named Arizona Pete. HNZL gave a mail to E.D. Richeson. He was called Jerry. The other male puppy, HNZL, was given to a friend, for him to donate, to a child. This child named the puppy Dumbo. The boy watched the Lassie series on television and fell in love with the breed. So he asked his father to trade Dumbo for a collie dog. Jensen contacted Mr. HNZL. And he asked if it would be possible, from HNZL, to change the Dumbo, for a collie. 
HNZL didn't like Dumbo. For he had doubts, of the quality, of one, of his aunts, on the paternal side. But Hainzel had no doubts about the quality of the parents of Dumbo. The HNZL, found a dog, Kali, in the city, of Mr. Jensen. He paid five dollars for the dog. So Hainzel and Jensen switched dogs. Jensen was happy for the exchange. Dumbo was already two years old. He walked calmly, and without a leash, in the HNZL's backyard. Dumbo would not approach any dog that showed aggression towards him on the chain. Dumbo was just a puppy, with the body of an adult dog. And he only thought about playing. Dumbo, lived as a pet, until he was three and a half years old. He accompanied HNZL on kennel tasks. One day Earl Tudor, visited HNZL. And he took the opportunity to take a dog, from the squad, from Mr. HNZL. Due to the friendship between the two. HNZL said to Earl Tudor that he could choose any dog. And without a doubt, Earl Tudor chose Dumbo. Mr. Earl Tudor was famous for choosing high-quality dogs. Earl Tudor was not American, and the pronunciation of the name Dumbo was difficult for him. For that reason, he changed the name of Dumbo, to Tudor Dibwa. In a short time, this name became famous, in the world of the American Pitbull Terrier. The Dibwa, was stolen from Earl Tudor, as soon as he took it, from Mr. HNZL. He was sold to a restaurateur, who called Dibwa, Runt. When Dibwa was four years old, Earl Tudor managed to get him back. Among these changes, and things, that happened in Diabio's life. He started to look different at the dogs that bothered him. Dibwa won three fights in the 20 kilograms category. Due to Dibwa's qualities and virtues, he became the best APBT at the time. He passed on a powerful genetic load. Regardless of the bitch, let him be mated. Even if the bitch was of poor quality. We must also mention an excellent mating, which was done, between Dibwa, with the female Black Widow. Who in my opinion is the best bitch ever. In this mating, extraordinary dogs were born. And mainly, dogs, which inherited, the ability to transmit, their genetic quality. Some APBTs, from Earl Tudor's Dibwa dog litter, and Mr. Carver's Black Widow female, were. Carver's Black Girl. Carver's Cracker. Carver's D. And Carver's Lasso. For these reasons, the dogmen rushed to cover the females, with the Dibwa dog. Many dogmen, from that time, as well as the dogmen, today. Its main base is the dog, Tudor Dibwa, in its lineage, from APBT. People like. Maurice Carver, Howard Hainzel, Burl Tudor, John Fonseca, Leo Kennard, Ralph Greenwood, George Sadler, Ronnie Hyde, Don Maloney, James Crenshaw, M.C. Cool, Enrique Morfin, Jim Twardowski, R. Gangs, D. Stubbs, Ruben Valenzuela, Gary Hammonds, Bert Sorrell, Floyd Boudreaux, William Lacefield, Pat Patrick, Indian Sonny, Scotty Nelson, Don Mayfield, etc. Dibwa died in 1958. And I can say that Dibwa is the pillar of most APBT lineages that exist today. Of all these dogmen, Maurice Carver used Diabio's blood the most. He took advantage, to purify his dogs, and preserve that blood. Thanks to Maurice Carver, it is still possible to find a high percentage of Tudor Dibois genetics. 
Although Dibio's parents belonged to Mr. HNZL, and the litter was born in his backyard. In my opinion, I do not consider Mr. Howard HNZL, as the true creator, of Dibwa. Yeah, it wasn't his will to do this mating. You will definitely see Mr. HNZL's breeding in Dibio's pedigree. But, from my point of view, the breeder, it was you, who despite the circumstances, decided to carry out the mating. I am of the opinion that who makes the decision which male to mate with which female. Under, criteria of what he believes, being valid or not. It should always be considered, the creator. Even if the dog's mated, it does not belong to you. Who makes the decision, to raise two animals. He will be solely responsible for the outcome of these future APBTs and their genetic quality. And time will answer whether the decision taken was correct or not. My name is Rodolfo Luis, and I invite everyone to enjoy the knowledge of this wonderful breed. Subscribe so you don't miss the next video. God bless you all. I went.